y'all. Welcome to Miss Clark's Chemistry Class. I have another lab. Now this lab, we're going to calculate density. And density, it's all fine and good. It is part of chemistry. But I'm going to be really honest with you. The purpose of this lab is to practice good scientific measuring. You know, where we measure with the correct precision by using the correct decimal places. And we're going to practice calculating with sig figs. Because remember, all of the digits that you record as a measurement, all of those digits are significant. So then once we start doing math with them, we've got to carry that precision all the way through to the end. That's what I really care about, to be honest with you. Can you carry the precision of your least precise number all the way to the end and relate your density in that same level of precision? That is the point of this lab. So go get your notebook, get something to write with, get a calculator, and let's get started. The first object we're going to find the density for is the wood block. So the next little bit is going to be all the measurements that we need to calculate density. Now I have a data table created and I put a link down below in the description. So if you don't have a data table because you're not in my class, then you might want to use that data table or you can construct your own. But you need to be keeping track of these measurements. Find the mass of the wooden block and record it in your data table. Make sure you're using the correct precision when you make this measurement. Find the length, width, and height of the wooden block. Again, with the correct precision. Also, make sure you're realizing we're using a metric ruler, centimeters. Science uses metric, don't forget. Calculate the volume. Make sure you're thinking about the rules for multiplying sig figs. Okay, now we're going to move on to a marble. Find the mass of the marble only. Remember to record the correct number of digits for precision. When subtracting to find the mass of the marble, make sure you're remembering the rules for subtracting to using sig figs. Are y'all sick of me reminding you about sig figs? Record the volume of water in the graduated cylinder. We're going to record the volume again after we add the marble. Make sure you're reading the correct number of digits on that graduated cylinder. Calculate the volume of the marble by subtracting the two volumes. This is called water displacement. This is a method to find the volume of irregular shapes. Now I realize there was a formula that we could have used to find the volume of a sphere, but it was little, and we're practicing water displacement. And we're subtracting, remember those rules for sig figs. Okay, the third substance that we're gonna find the density of is water. So its measurements are coming up next. Record the mass of the empty graduated cylinder. Record the mass of the graduated cylinder with water. Calculate the mass of the water only. Again, think about sig figs. Record the volume of the water in the graduated cylinder. And our last substance to get the density for is alcohol. Rubbing alcohol, record the mass of the empty graduated cylinder. Record the mass of the graduated cylinder with alcohol, then calculate the mass of the rubbing alcohol only. Record the volume of rubbing alcohol in the graduated cylinder.
Okay, y'all, we have collected all of our data that we need to calculate density. Here is the formula for density. Density, it's the capital D, equals the mass divided by the volume. So we have little m for mass and the big V for volume. And the very last thing that we need to talk about are the units for density. This is what we call a derived unit, where we're going to combine some units together. So the unit for mass is grams. And the unit for volume is milliliters, grams per milliliter. Derived units will also help you kind of figure out the formula. Grams is on top, so mass was on top. Milliliters is on bottom, so volume was on bottom. So we knew we had to divide mass by volume to get density. Okay, how'd we do? I hope we thought about sig figs the whole time. I know it kind of made that impossible not to, but remember that was the point. I hope we remembered that when we add and subtract, we're using the least amount of decimal places offered to us. But when we're multiplying and dividing, we use the least amount of sig figs provided to us. Okay, well that's all I have. Until next time, bye y'all.